3.2.2 Provincial and Local Administration Shivaji had divided his whole empire into four provinces. Northern provinces, this part included Balaghat, Kauri region, southern Surat, northern Konkan, northern Bombay and Pune. It was under Peshwa Maro Trimbak Pingle. Southern provinces, this part included southern Bombay, southern Konkan, coastal regions, Samantwari regions, and others. This province was under Anaji Panth. Southeastern province, this province included the regions of Satara, Kolchpur, Balgao, and Dharwar and Kopal. Four southern provinces, these included districts from Kopal to Velu like Zinzi, Velari, Chennai, Chittor, and Akot. This province was under the military officials. These provinces were known as Swaraj. Every provincial ruler respected the wish of the king. Like at the center, there was a committee of eight ministers in every province. In order to maintain central hold over the Sai Karkun or the Print Party. And the provincial ministers, Shivaji did not make their offices hereditary and to some extent kept central hold on their appointments under the Print Party of the Sai Karkun and the Subedas. Perhaps, Karkun was responsible for the maintenance of the empire and Subedas were in charge of the land yielding about 1 lakh annual revenue according to one estimate, Shivaji got the income of 23.5 crores annually barring the income from the Choth. On the basis of this account it can be maintained that there were about 350 Subedas in his empire. The office of Subedar was generally given to the Brahmins. In the local administration of Shivaji, forts played an important part. The responsibility for the defense of the neighboring area of the fort was of the Havaldar. He made arrangements for all administration of the fort. Shivaji's empire included about 240 forts. Thus, he had appointed about 240 Havaldars. The post of the Havaldar was generally given to a Maratha. He managed the entire administration of the fort. In every fort, besides the Havaldar, there were two other officials of equal rank, first Sai Norbert who was generally a Maratha, who led and supervised the army stationed in the fort and the other equal ranking officer was Subnis. He was generally a Brahmin. The financial arrangements of the fort in the neighboring area, the correspondence and the management of the official stores were his responsibilities. Karakhanis, who were generally Kaistha, helped him. Shivaji paid all his provincial or local officials either in cash or ordered their salaries to be given out of the revenues of a particular area. 3.2.3 Land Revenue Administration Shivaji organized his land revenue administration most probably after the pattern of that of Malik Amber, the minister of Ahmednagar. Four main sources of revenue in his kingdom were the land revenue, custom, Choth and Sardesh Mukhi. He brought the Jagir system under control to some extent to make his land revenue system effective and successful. In AD 1679. Annaji Datta made a revenue survey of the cultivable land and fixed the land revenue according to the productivity of the soil. Initially, he fixed it 30% of the produce but later on it was increased to 40%. To protect the peasants, Shivaji exempted the revenue demands at the time of natural calamities and gave them Takvi loans to purchase seeds, and so forth. Takavi loans were taken back in easy installments. According to some historians, Shivaji completely ended the zamindari or Deshmukhi system, but it does not appear to be correct from our point of view because he gave salary to many officials in the form of Jagir though they were kept under control. During his time, there was strict supervision over the officials who acquired a hereditary right over land. Shivaji did not permit them to keep soldiers or build forts in their jagirs and took from every jagir a fixed amount as the state's share. 
Besides revenue, a fixed percentage of the custom duty was charged on the import and export of the goods of businessmen. Shivaji augmented his income by exacting revenue from the neighboring regions of the Mughals. This was one-fourth of the revenue imposed on the land and was called the Choth. Probably, it was a sort of military tax. It was levied on those regions where Marathas promised not to have any military raid. A. Similar type of tax was Sardesh Mukhi which was one-tenth of the state income. It was levied on those Maratha Deshmukhs who acknowledged Shivaji as their Sardeshmukh. By levying this tax, Shivaji proved that he was very far-sighted and the builder of a strong empire. By means of the Sardesh Mukhi tax, he achieved success in bringing the various Maratha chiefs under one sovereign power and established the Maratha Empire. Recent research has proved that the financial system of Shivaji was beneficial to the people. 3.2.4 Judicial System Shivaji neither established organized courts like the modern courts nor did he establish any law code. His judicial administration was based on the traditional ways only. At the center, the eight ministers of the Ishta Pradhan, namely, Nyayadish decided both the civil and the criminal cases according to the Hindu scriptures only. In the provinces, same function was performed only by the provincial judges. In the villages, judicial work was performed by the panchayats. Justice was impartial and the penal code was strict. In brief, Shivaji was an able administrator and he laid the foundation of a powerful empire. Undoubtedly, his kingdom was a regional kingdom but it was based on popular will. Shivaji adopted a secular policy in his empire. In the words of historian Ishwari Prasad, he organized an administrative system which in many respects was better than even that of the Mughals.